Hey folks, Vincent here from the net. So the other day I was browsing through Nick Campbell's website here, our blog, RayscaleGorilla.com, and I saw that he did a tutorial on the Born Legacy title trailers using Cinema 4D and his new product Transform. And what Transform allowed him to do was to break the logo or type apart here and kind of animate these individual parts. So this is the original here, as you see here. Um, you know, a link will be in the video description down below to see the original. Now, Nick actually made his own version using Cinema 4D and Transform once again, and this is his preview here. So let me just play it real quick. And the final kind of looks like this as well, except you know the original doesn't have all these crazy lens flares, and the background is actually black. But, you know, this pretty much covers the whole thing here, and he does it in Cinema 4D once again. And it's really, really great, but if you look at the individual parts here, you can see that they're actually just 
kind of like 2D pieces here. So I was kind of thinking, you know, since these parts are all 2D flat layers here, looks something like what After Effects can do. So why not create this using After Effects as opposed to Cinema 4D? Because we're really not working with any 3D stuff besides the 3D space. And I thought maybe we can pull it off in After Effects. So gave it a shot. And you know, it doesn't look exactly the same because we do have some limitations within After Effects as well as some of the effects and built-in plugins. But we will be trying to do this using the built-in plugins only. So let's just take a look at my little version here. So again, not quite the same, but you kind of get that same nice reveal here, the formation of these broken parts into this type here. So without further ado, let's just take a look at how we can recreate this in After Effects. Hopefully you'll learn something. We'll be using time remapping, um, the CC pixel poly effect and stuff like that. So in After Effects, I'm going to create a new composition. And I'll just call this one born. And it's going to be 720p. And we'll make it 20 seconds long. Hit OK. Now the techniques that we're going to use are going to be very similar to the shatter tutorial I did a little while back. But um, you know, we should learn something new in this tutorial. So in this new composition here, let's go ahead and create a new type layer, a new text layer. So layer new text. And you know, we're going to do something different. We're going to call this one born user. Or better born kid get it anyways we're going to change this born here to something a little bit different so we have some contrast in the size and we'll scale it up a little bit and I won't bother to create the additional type above it because you know this is going to be concept based and I don't want to waste your time doing extra stuff when you kind of get the idea yourself so we have our type right here very very simple now let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to shatter this thing up now there are many ways to shatter things up. You can use the CC pixel poly effect, which is what I'm going to use. You can use the shatter effect or even maybe the car web effect. But in this case, I'm going to use the CC pixel poly effect under simulations. And it's because it's very, very easy. And all the parameters in the CC pixel poly effect is, you know, all that we need. Nothing more, nothing less. So drag the CC pixel poly effect onto the born kid text layer or whatever your text layer is. And, you know, we'll move 10 seconds in and as you can see you see nothing here because by default the effect causes our stuff to shatter here and you can kind of see what it does but we'll just ignore that for now we'll set the gravity to zero so that the pieces kind of stay afloat here and we'll just set the force down to zero for now we'll just keep it like this and change the spinning to zero so they're not all rotated and such so we just have our type here We'll move 10 seconds in just so we have some room on the left side here when we reverse this thing. So we'll start at 10 seconds. We'll hit a stopwatch keyframe for the force as well as the spinning. And we'll move about one second in. So this moves around 11 seconds here. And then we're just going to shatter this thing up. So we're going to increase the force by quite a bit. I'm holding down shift. I'm just going to crank up the force to around 1,000 or so. And that's really going to shatter our pieces. Now our pieces are still kind of flat because they're not rotated at an angle or anything like that. So let's go ahead and change the spinning to maybe one revolution so we have some variation here. So, so pretty much what it does is it shatters the layer into little pieces right here. And as you can see, we are kind of getting the effect that we want to. Except we have some stray shatter pieces here. And it's kind of backwards. But as you can see, the chunks are kind of large. So I'm going to decrease the grid spacing here. So we just have some smaller parts. Around 18 looks fine. I think in the original they used a little bigger parts because they have more control over the polygons and such like that. But you know, we're using After Effects. So we have a very basic shattered thing right here. So I'm just gonna make some room in my timeline to do a quick RAM preview. So kind of fast. Should last around right here. That's pretty cool. So we have all these nice little bits of pieces. I want to duplicate this layer one time. So select your text layer, hit Control or Command D to duplicate it here. And so we have two of the exact same thing, except this text layer is going to be our stroke because we want to add some more particles, some more shattered bits and pieces into the scene here. So we could increase the grid spacing, but I want to create an additional kind of stroke as you see in the main comp here that I did. You can kind of see that we have a semi stroke outline around our text to kind of give it some more, uh, I guess, variation and flavor to our whole animation. So it's just going to add some more variation to it all. So for this one, I'm going to call it Stroke. 
and we'll go into the characters here and you know we'll just select our text and then I'll change the color to none here so it's going to cancel out the color and we're going to enable stroke so if I just solo this layer here you can see that we just have the stroke and the stroke is set to around 2 of course you can play around with the stroke width here if you want to but you know 2 works fine we don't want it too obvious we just want little bits and pieces so now what we have now is shattered bits of our text as well as our stroke and we want to add some variation to our stroke once more again so we're going to maybe uh, increase the grid spacing a little bit maybe to around 21 or so and then we want to maybe increase the speed randomness to 50 and then we want to change the direction randomness to zero we don't want any uh, randomness in direction we want it all to come from kind of one central area and it's not really going to give us that but it will help and we'll do the same for the born kid text we'll change the direction randomness to zero we'll add some variation so we'll change the speed randomness to 60 so we have some variation in the speed here and let's do a quick RAM preview. So it kind of shatters out. And if you kind of scrub through it backwards, you can see the kind of effect that we're going after. It's not perfect because we have some stray particles in the background, but we can't really control that because we don't have that control here in CC Pixel Poly. So, you know, we're just going to have to ignore it. And I might want to decrease the grid spacing even more to maybe 15. I want some smaller bits and pieces here. Makes it more dramatic. And then maybe we can change the spinning for one of them to a higher value. So maybe two revolutions here. Just like that. And that's looking pretty good. Now, of course, you would want to apply some motion blur to this. Unfortunately, the CC Pixel Poly doesn't really support motion blur. So we'll just apply it manually using CC uh, Forest Motion Blur a little bit later. So now that we're done with the text, let's go ahead and bring it into a new composition. So we'll just call this one Slow Mo. Hit OK. And we'll just drag in the Born composition into the new composition here. This way we can kind of just flatten things together. We can apply color correction to this thing. We can apply uh, the CC Force Motion Blur into this one composition and everything will look great. So we have this. Let's go ahead and start making this thing look a little bit more realistic here and start reversing things so that it kind of plays back like the original trailer. So we can right click on this layer, go to time, and click on time reverse layer. And that's just going to reverse the layer. So it's just going to come together like this. And you know, we'll start somewhere right here. We'll just trim this over here. And we'll just move it back to the beginning here. So it just kind of starts right here. And it's going to start from here and kind of end to this born kid. So unfortunately right now, the animation is a little bit uh, too fast here. If I do a quick RAM preview. As you can see, it's a little bit too fast. So what you're probably thinking is, you know, just go into the born composition and then go hit you in the keyboard and increase the spacing for these two keyframes. And that would make it, uh, you know, slower, except the particles would be moving too slow. I want the particles to move fast, but we don't want to form it too fast. And again, this is just some of the limitations with this um, After Effects method here. So we just can't increase these keyframes or else the particles are going to be moving too slow. And we don't have that fine control like in Cinema 4D where we can control the individual pieces here. But what we can do is kind of add some slow motion to it. So we can go to right click on the layer, go to time, and then enable time remapping. You can use time stretch. But I'm going to use time remapping here. And I'm going to hit a keyframe for right here in the beginning. And we'll move forward until right when it forms their text right here. Hit a keyframe. So pretty much nothing happens, nothing changes because you know we just added a key point here and we added a key point here. And those time durations are going to happen in this time frame here. So nothing really happens, nothing really changes. We didn't really slow things down or increase things. But we are going to slow things down by dragging this keyframe out. So it's going to go from this time to this time, except it's going to take longer to get from this time to this time because we increase the keyframes. Kind of hard to explain. Pretty much we're just messing with the time here. And as you see, we get this weird glitch here. I haven't really found a solution to that. But I find that if you change the keyframe interpolation, 
So maybe something like Bezier. It should kind of help it, but you know, I don't, I'm not quite sure about this yet. So that's looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and enhance it just a little bit more because as you can see, right when the text forms here, it kind of just stays still. And we want to add some subtle movement so it's not too boring. So let's hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position here. And we'll hit a keyframe. We're going to hit U on the keyboard. And then we want to apply the position keyframe just a little bit before the text forms here. So we just have some leeway. And so we can't really notice the kind of positioning happening. So we'll start right here, right before it starts forming. We'll put a keyframe here. And we'll move around seven seconds long. And then we want to make this thing a 3D layer so we can control the Z axis here. And we'll just push the Z axis towards a negative number here. So we just have some subtle growth movement. So basically, once the text forms, it's going to move and kind of grow towards us. And that's just going to create our very subtle movement so it doesn't look too boring here. And then we can easy ease these keyframes as well by hitting F9. And so that's pretty cool. Let's do a basic opacity fade so we don't want to see all these little bits of particles here. So that's just going to um, very subtly hide these particles a little bit. We'll move forward a little bit, increase the opacity to 100 here. Something like that. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and tweak the keyframes here. So as you can see, we have our rough break apart here. And what we want is we want a very smooth fade in. So if you go back to the slow mo composition here, you can see that our text kind of abruptly forms right here. It's kind of rough right here. And we want to smooth that out. And remember, everything is reversed. So we want to smooth this part. We just play it back in reverse. We want to smooth the formation. So we want to smooth the beginning keyframes. So in the force, let's go into the graph editor. And we'll convert this one to a Bezier. And we'll just kind of smooth the beginning out a little bit, just so we have a very nice soft ramp, and then it kind of explodes. And we'll do the same for the stroke uh, text layer right here. So we'll go into hit U, go to the force, and we'll just convert this to a auto bezier. And we'll just create a nice little ramp here, just so it's going to smoothly come to a stop a little bit. And we'll just do the same for the spinning. And hopefully that will kind of ease things in a little bit. Let's go back into the slow-mo composition. Just check this out. That's looking a lot better. We can just tweak this a little bit by going to here and then just and growing it just a little bit more. And that's pretty cool. Now, now that we have that set up, let's go in and apply our motion blur so we can go to the effects and presets here, search in CC force motion blur. Now, before we use this effect, I want to warn you that this effect is pretty, pretty um, intensive in the render times, especially if you pull up the sample. So let's just apply the CC force motion blur onto the born composition. And we'll go to a place where it's all shattering here. And as you can see, it applies these nice motion blurs. And you may want to turn up the samples to maybe around 12 or so. I wouldn't really go past 30 or 40 because it kind of gets ridiculously uh, heavy in the render time. It will just increase the shutter angle to about 230 or so. Now, if you have revisions, um, real smart motion blur, then I highly recommend you using that because it's so much more efficient. Um, it's not as render intensive and it just works very, very well compared to the CC force motion blur. So now that we have the motion blur set up, let's go ahead and work on the nice background. I mean, we could make it original and we could keep it black over white like this, but you know, there's no fun in that. So we'll create a new layer and we'll just call this VG, hit OK. And we'll let's just apply a ramp effect to this background here. And we'll set it to radio ramp, set the start color to kind of this mid-tone blue gray area and then set the end color to something darker you know something like that and then we can align this up a little bit spread this out so we have a very basic background 
And you know, to kind of get rid of the bandings here, you can either switch to 16 bits or 32 bits. We can apply a noise to it and that's going to kind of dissolve it out a little bit. So it's actually grain here. So add some grain, change the viewing mode from preview to final output. And that kind of gets rid of the bending again, except we're gonna decrease the intensity to maybe about 0.25. And we'll just drag that underneath our born text here, composition, because again, we have some transparency in our born. We didn't create a background in that composition. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and bring a little bit more life into this. Let's go ahead and create a lens flare. So we can go create a new solid, call this flare. And we'll apply optical flares. You can use no light factory if you wish. Instead of using this thing as a regular lens flare and just smacking it on like Nick Campbell does, um, we'll just apply it in a very subtle way. We'll use it as a background here. So select a flare. I'm going to use Aura here, or Aura, however you want to pronounce it. And I'm going to make some, a few adjustments. I'm going to delete some of these uh, annoying irises here. So we'll just hide this one, hide this one, and then we can hide the main one here. Just like that. Hit OK. And then we'll set the blending mode from normal to add. And this is going to add our flare into the scene. We'll just drag it somewhere here, maybe down here or so. So you get a very subtle kind of uh, nice gradient and variation in color into our background. And then we can even blur this thing out a little bit. So we can apply a fast blur and apply it to our flare. And then we can blur out the flare a little bit so we have more nice, smoother gradients, smoother colors. And then we'll check repeat edge pixels. Just so we have this really, really nice, subtle background. And then we can create our vignette. And if you haven't really noticed, I'm just kind of messing around, adding some enhancements to this animation and kind of compositing things in together to make it look a little bit nicer compared to the original here. So we'll hit it subtract hit F on the keyboard, we can feather it out, hit MM, and bring up the mass expansion here. And then we can lower down the opacity a little bit. Just so we're kind of focusing on the born kid type here. And then we'll apply some basic color correction. So let's create a new adjustment layer. Call this CC. Now, for color correction, I love using Magic Bullet Looks, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to use the basic curves effects because, again, I want to keep all this into the default built-in plugins. We'll add some contrast here. Want, maybe want to bring up the reds a little bit. And then bring up the blues and the shadows. Maybe play around with the greens a little bit. Just so we create this really interesting kind of gradient color. So as you can see, the color correction or color grading makes a huge difference as we kind of colorize and stylize our background here. So yeah, I think this animation looks pretty cool. It's very simple to create, just some basic shattering and some time remapping. And of course, the rest is just left to you guys to stylize. You can apply some pretty cool textures to the text. You can create some interesting backgrounds. But again, I highly suggest you experiment, play around, and you know, add your own twist to this thing. Because again, After Effects has its limitation. We don't have full control over the whole type like Cinema 4D does. But you know, we can get kind of creative and create something different. So hopefully this tutorial was kind of useful to you guys. Hopefully you guys learned something new. I really enjoyed making it. If you guys have any questions, leave the comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And the Grayscale Gorilla link as well as the original video link trailer will be in the description down below. So definitely check that out. So that's pretty much it guys. My name is Vincent Nguyen and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye guys.